you have now just hired a merchant to fill your ATM for you with their own money. So you don't need to maintain that. In addition to that, if you structured your BTM business properly, like I mentioned, you've outsourced the actual compliance and the operation of BTM side to another company. So you have just created two, two, not one guys, two businesses in one. All right, all right, all right, guys. What's going on? Get them here, CEO of ATM2Together.com. Welcome to another weekly live. Now, with that being said, guys, let me get into the agenda for today. It's the secret to close any ATM location in 2024. Make sure you stay tuned for that lesson, guys. Before I get into this lesson, right? Let me tell you a little quick little story. So, my buddy Jacob, man. Good friend of mine, but at the end of the day, getting distracted, always getting distracted. And what I mean by that was he had this business idea that was absolutely phenomenal. I think this guy was one of the smartest guys I know. He just kept getting distracted. And so what I'd say is like, hey, Jacob, man, just focus on the idea. Just focus on the idea. And I guarantee you, you will profit. You will reap the rewards. Well, he had a very unique model when it comes down to roofing, and he is growing month over month. I mean, he's like a multi million dollar business. He grew up in the hood. So I bring up Jacob for a reason. Bringing that same example is the same thing I brought on to a company we're working with, ETM Machines. They had a phenomenal idea for machine. I was like, hey, you know, I'm telling you right now, you bring this to the market. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. This is how we're going to develop it. We're going to use this and this and that. It was craziness. Like you see this, this right here. I have like 14 different whiteboards in the office and I'm just drawing. It was like a, the movie, A Beautiful Mind. So the reason I bring this up is because industry disruption. When you're able to disrupt the industry, you have to act fast because you were just one day away, one step away from a big company saying, oh, no, 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 no. We're going to take your idea. We're going to take your idea. Thanks for spending all that year developing it and getting the patents, but eh, you can sue us. We're just going to quickly deploy all your machines all over the place. This is what it is. We'll probably settle with you later. We're going to make so much money. That's what happens with every industry. It is what it is. That's why you have to act fast. And it's not to be scared. It's not to like, you know, like get this mentality of like, I can't tell anybody everything. Otherwise, I wouldn't be on this Facebook Live with you. But it comes down to in business, if you have an idea that works, you need to act fast because the competition's going to catch up and they're going to try to clone, mimic you. And it won't be as good as you, but it is what it is, guys, right? So let's get right into this lesson. So ATM locations. And in case you don't know about the ATM business, guys, real simple. I'm going to break it down to elevator pitch, 30 seconds. You are a private money lender, right? It's like Target versus Target, right? But you're a private money lender. And what that means is... In the traditional ATM space, you own a machine. It's literally four pieces of metal. You place that at a location. You put your cash in it, typically about one to $4,000. That's about the range we say, usually a little more than a thousand. But the reason I bring this up is because you're giving people quick access to the cash. Typically the amount you pull out from a cash ATM, that's not a bank, is about 20 to hundred dollars. Think about it for a second. I mean, how much do you really pull out? Maybe up to $200. Everything else, if you're pulling out a thousand dollars or more, you're going to your bank or bank ATM. So you're giving people quick access to cash. So say customer A, you go to your machine on Monday, they pull out twenty dollars. You charge them what we call the convenience fee, but it's called a surcharge. We'll say that's three dollars. That's about the average across the U.S. You're going to about three twenty-five or three fifty. You go to like Miami Beach or you go to Las Vegas to strip. It's gonna be like eight dollars. That's just what it is. But we'll say it's three dollars. Now you just made three dollars in profit. So you're probably thinking like, hey, that's not that much money, but you just got to do some simple math. That's one customer. So say one customer pulls out $20. They get charged at $3, right? The $20 and that $3 goes back to your bank account the next day. Five people use it a day. We'll just say five people. That's $15. After 30 days in a month, that's $450. That's machine number one. You get number two, that's $900. You get number three, that is $1,350. You get number four, that is uh, $1,800. Was my math right, guys? Now you start seeing how we can quickly start adding residual income for all these machines. These are your little, little employees. They don't talk back. They don't have issues. They don't fall in sick. They're just little machines. 
So that's the basics of the industry, okay? That's been the industry for years. It's been a secret. In, it's almost like parking lots. It's always been a place you park. You never realize somebody owned it. Yeah. What if I told you there was a device that's going to disrupt that industry? Would you guys want to know? I want you to comment secret below. Comment secret. Because this is the way, personally, I'm going to use to disrupt the industry and what we're focusing on. Granted, ATMs, BTMs, phenomenal. But we're going to sneak in with this. That way we build relationships to actually get other locations too. Well, let me break something down for you guys, right? Let's see if this uh, pops up. I'm seeing some comments. Now, the UTM, the all-in-one machine, guys. So here's the reason why I bring this up. You're probably thinking like, hey, yeah, it just it literally looks like a kiosk. Exactly right. Now, with this, guys, all this is super simple. An ATM and a BTM, they had a baby, and they called it UTM, right? the universal teller machine. Now, looking at this, guys, you're probably thinking, like, well, what's so different about it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, you just look at the – let me zoom in over here. So if you really look at the device itself, you're going to see a few things here. You see this right here, right? And then you see this, and you see this. So there's a few things here. Obviously, there's a barcode scanner, there's a camera, touch screen, and all that good stuff, whatever. But it's the core, it's the guts that matter. Now, if you have a card reader in the machine, what's that telling you? Well, you can actually pull cash out. So somebody put debit cards in, they can withdraw their cash right away. That is literally one business right here. They get the receipt. In addition to that, guys, they can buy and sell crypto on the machine using this side. So here's the importance of this, guys. Here's the importance. It's not that necessarily two businesses one, but the fact that you now consolidate two machines in one, guys. Now, think about this for a second. Remember I brought up the BTMs? Well, the BTMs, when it comes down to transactions, you charge a percentage. It's simply about 20%, 20 to 25%. That's the average. So somebody puts in, we'll say, $1,000 in the machine. You charge them 20%. You make $200 profit. Five people use it a month, that's $1,000. Cool. On the ATM side, people pull out on this side, we'll say $20. They get charged that fee, $3. So you get $450. So now you're looking at about $1,500 a month in one machine. Well, the question you naturally have to ask yourself is this, guys, right? You have to ask yourself this. Well, wouldn't the location have an ATM or a BTM already? Well, yes. That's a very high likelihood. They have one of the two, right? If it's a high traffic location, more than likely they have one of the two. But how many of you guys would like to know the exact pitch that I'm going to use? I'm going to direct it for teams, clients, everybody to use to replace machines at locations. Comment pitch below. Comment pitch. I'm, I'm giving it to you. This is literally what we're going to do, guys, for thousands and thousands of locations. You guys ready? All right, so this is how it's going to be presented. It's going to be called the Free Digital ATM Upgrade Program. Think about that for a second. There's two aspects to that, right? Number one is free. Number two, I would say three aspects, is digital. So you're like, digital? What are you talking about? Number three is upgrade. Who doesn't like an upgrade? Whether it's Verizon, T-Mobile, whatever. Everybody wants an upgrade. Even when it comes on your iPhone. You want, hey, it's the 14, it's the 15, it's the 16. Hey, upgrade me. Now, here's the reason why this is going to be pivotal when it comes down to pitching locations. Stores operate off of square footage. Walmart, for example, biggest, one of the, one of the most profitable retail stores. They will measure inches, how far aisles need to be apart. That's what the founder was known for. To maximize the profitability per inch. So when it comes down to a convenience store, a liquor store, a gas station, et cetera, you, can you guys agree that, hey, maybe that square footage is, is very vital? Because at the end of the day, let, let's be realistic. Real estate prices, the price of land is very expensive. 
You can't just have all this land. Even if you're like in the middle of nowhere, we're coming to a place near you because we're like, hey, we want to build our cities over here. So you start realizing like big cities, that's why the stores are usually very small because it's expensive. Now, if you're a store owner, if you're a convenience store owner, or you're a gas station operator, et cetera, and you have two machines, you have a BTM and you have an ATM right next to each other, you're, that's taking about like four or five feet of space, maybe even up to six feet, depending if they need clearance, et cetera. What is that taking away? I guess I want you to comment below. Think about this for a second. You need to think like a business owner, a disruptor of the industry. What is all those machines taken away from that business owner or that merchant or that clerk? Well, the way you want to think about this is what is their profit? Where does their profit come from? If it's a gas station, there's two sides. There's the gas pumps themselves. So they want to have the most amount of gas pumps as possible, right? Because that means the most amount of customers or the most amount of merchandise. On the other side, there is the store aspect. Well, in the store, what do they sell? They sell products. They sell inventory. So if you're able to add more inventory, say perfect conditions, right? We're not going to get into that. Perfect conditions. You're able to add more inventory. Doesn't that mean you have the ability to sell more? Think about it. It's like a storage unit. If you can fit more, you can put more stuff in there. So here's the thing. If you're selling chips or Red Bulls or things like that, for example, and there's two machines, and you as the operator say, hey, Mr. Merchant, I'm actually calling because we have a free digital ATM upgrade program. What's that? Well, let me ask you this. Who owns your ATM at your store? Oh, it's owned by us. What about the BTM? Oh, it's another company. Okay. Well, how much space would you say that's taking for you? Uh, it's taking about, well, I got to split it. And then there's a power cord that goes in between. And this. So it's about like six to eight feet. Okay. So do you say that you have like enough space for all that in addition to all your merchandise? Well, I mean, if I could remove one, it'd be great. Okay. Well, what would you put in place of one of those machines if you're able to keep that same profit? Well, I would actually add a Red Bull fridge. They called me. They want to sponsor my products. Uh, there's Monster Fridge. And then Coca-Cola also wants to be a distributor and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So you're saying that. If you could keep both sources of income, but reduce the amount of space they take, you would want to do that. Yes. And you'd be able to create an additional source of income with another fridge, another shelf, another sort of gum or whatever. Correct. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do for you. It's a few things. First of all, I'm going to completely replace your ATM for free with a brand new state-of-the-art touchscreen machine. Really? Exactly. How much is it going to cost me? Absolutely nothing. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of that BTM from that big name company, and I'm going to implement all the things from that machine into that same ATM. How does that sound? It sounds good. What's the catch? Well, here's the catch. All I want you to do is continue maintaining the ATM like you do. Well, what's in it for me? I'm going to let you keep 75% of the profit from the ATM. Really? And you're just going to put your own machine there. Correct. Does that sound like a crazy deal, guys? We're, we're out, out from the merchant. Comment crazy below. Comment crazy below. Because you're probably like, yeah, how are you going to make money? Well, here's the plan. You have now just hired a merchant to fill your ATM for you with their own money. So you don't need to maintain that. In addition to that, if you structured your BTM business properly, like I mentioned, you've outsourced the actual compliance and the operation of BTM side to another company. So you have just created two, two, not one guys, two businesses in one place. And guess how much management you're doing? As much as you want. So here's another option with that. You start seeing how all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. So I'm gonna give them free equipment. I'm gonna, I'm literally just gonna generate 25% of profit for no reason. They're gonna do that for me. In addition to that, I'm getting another source of income from the BTM side. Correct. Well, here's the third thing. This isn't out yet, guys. Full disclaimer, this isn't out yet, but we're in talks with some companies. In addition to that, I would even sweeten the deal more. It's an irresistible offer for the merchant. I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Merchant, that's not it. It's like, that's not it. Wait, you're going to give me a free machine. You're going to free up inventory. I'm going to keep 75% of profit. You're going to maintain the machine. Correct. But I want to make sure I take care of you. 
and I value our relationship because I know you're going to refer me to other locations. So here's the third thing I'm going to do. How many customers do you have in there buying gift cards? Um, once in a while, we have like Visa prepaid and all that. Okay. How many people do you have that, you know, would want to do like Western Union or like money payments or things like that? Well, I, I get a decent amount of customers. They ask me like, where's the closest like bill pay and all that. Well, here's the thing. My machine really soon is going to offer a service where customers are able to find it on a map, which means they find your store on the map. So now they see that Snickers bar, they see the Coca-Cola, they want to buy something really quick. And they're going to be able to pay their bills at the machine also. Think about that for a second. So I'm a customer. I find this place. I want to pay my Exxon Mobil uh, gas card bill. I go there or my credit card bill. I go there. I get cash. I put it in the machine. I type in my account number. I get charged a convenience fee about three or four or five dollars. And that is how I'm able to pay this card. So then you start thinking, you're like, well, wait a second. If they're able to pay a card, why wouldn't they be able to fill up a gift card? Exactly. There's a card reader. So don't you see the industry disruption that can happen with this machine? But it all starts with the right location, guys. All right. So that's all I got about the new plan to close as many ATM deals as possible. If you guys like that lesson, you want more info, I want you to comment info below. If you want more info in regards to the way, like my game plan, how I'm structured the behind the scenes, it took me like 17 iterations. Like, how can this be my perfect masterpiece? Comment info below, right? One of our team members will probably send you a message. There's actually, I guess I might as well announce this right now. I just created a three part video mini series on the UTM business. And if you want a copy of that, comment mini course.